Well, I'm on a roll here. I got the 1976 Sears down here. I'm gonna clean it up, do some adjustments to it, and also I'd like to see what the differences are between this one and the 79 version. Because here's the part that gets odd. The 79 version is actually a little bit different. Like, like I'll explain where I'm getting at. This 76 in the styling was near identical to the 1982 Sears I had, the low-end one that had like no options on it. Because I mean, you see how this looks? Identical. Okay, see how the picture tube looks like the bezel has a bit steeper, um, so there's not much angle to it, to the tube. This looks exactly, and how this looks, looks identical to the 82. But you compare this, this one, this one has a bit more of an angle. There's no little ridgy there. And this overlaps the metal cabinet, as well as some other things. And boy, is it dusty. Once I clean these up, and I, if I take these back over until I remodel the room, where I have actual built-in shelves to have everything on display, I'm gonna cover them in bags. But wow, is this one different. I mean, not so much, if you compare the two. Uh, the cord wrap was right here, but apparently the other part is missing in action. But there's the manufacturer date of July 1976. Model numbers. Now, if you look down here, all your controls are accessible from the back. This right here is the same as the 79 and the 82. It has drive, blue, green, and horizontal hold. But this one also brings to the back the red, green, and blue, or I'm sorry, blue, green, and red bias. All right. On this TV over here, um, those holes are there, but they're blanked out. The drive bias controls are right here. Here's some other interesting things. This has a circuit breaker. And if you can see that, it says automatic circuit breaker, push to reset. This also has a service and normal switch. On the other TV, that jumper I pulled to do this grayscale, that's what that service switch does. And here's the other thing. It has an automatic frequency control gain and defeat switch on the back versus what I showed you on the other one. The other thing I noticed that's different, I mean this part right here is the same, but the antennas, which are the same, actually wait, I, 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 so I take it back. The antennas are the same, but this, everything's built in. This actually has antenna holders, uh, the other one didn't. And it's all built in, and the twin lead comes through the cabinet, as you can see. So, when I got this television, it worked fine. I took it apart and tweaked it a little bit, but I never cleaned it up, really. Just a quick cleanup. This is what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to do to this TV what I did to this one. Wow, this one's definitely older. But this is the part where it gets really weird. Like I kept mentioning about comparing this one to the 82, the circuit board on the, eight, the 79 was very light, very most closely related to the 82. But this is the part where it gets weird. This 76, in terms of this, the CRT connector and the flyback, were almost identical to that of the 82. It's like this, the older version was using the 82. Maybe the 82 was leftover parts. Because this fly, you saw what the flyback looked like on the 79. This was the same flyback on the 82. You can see how much bigger it is. And this is what, it, it identical. So this is getting weird. And this, this was, this, this high voltage tripler was on the, um, like this on the 82. And up here, the focus was mounted up there. But anyhow, look at look at how look at the yoke. Look at that, man. 
This one's not as bad, but it just needs a little bit of cleaning out. But it, there was obviously another switch here because you can see the spot for it. There's the transistor's location on here. That one's a bit yellowed. Here's the other thing I was mentioning about the older power cord. See? Definitely 70s vintage power cord here. Okay, what else is unique here? But yeah, th th this CRT socket and the high voltage tripler and flyback are identical to the 82. It's like, I'm, I'm assuming the 82 had to have been leftover parts because this is the part that's weird. That's the thing I thought was weird about my grandfather's 82 was it had, still had the metal cabinet. But moving on, you see how much more involved things were. Look at the size of the power supply in this beast. The power supply, the switching mode power supply, on the 79 was all on the main board. This one's a separate board. Huge resistors, caps. The tuner is over here on this one. And again, it's Varactor diode tuning. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. Remember I was just talking about one button color? Let's see what one button color does on this one. Actually, I gotta hunt it out. No, this is what they did. One button color on this one is over here. It's that circuit board right there. I wanna know what those uh, potentiometers are. This, there's the speaker with no cover on it. Four ohms, 2.5 watts. Oh yeah, here's the picture tube, and everything's in the way because I'm trying to, I'm not looking at my camera. July 1976, well, it's a bicentennial TV. And what part number are we? Oh, look, look, what the hell, Do you, it's an NEC made in Japan. This picture tube's an NEC made in Japan. What the hell? Okay, okay, this is weird. So I'm assuming that's the picture tube number there. I'll have to see if it's in my book. I'm going to test it. But see, this is what a few years does. How much more is, is involved here. So my goal tonight is to clean it up. Give it a, some adjustments. And uh, see what happens. As you can see, the integrated circuits are also socketed on this model. It seems to be a lot more going on and a lot larger components in this set. Well, I blew all the dirt out of it. This also is on a sled. Pull the ch whole chassis out. I pulled as far as I could. I felt disconnecting the second anode button and everything. But um, I don't know. Well, after a thorough clean out, this is where I'm at. As you can see, it looks much cleaner in there now. As for tuners, this larger one on the bottom is your VHF, the smaller one up top is the UHF. And as you can see for inputs, it comes up through here. And interesting, there's actually a you know, transformer on there to convert it from uh, 300 back to 75 into the tuners. But what I'm doing right now, I got the CR7000 hooked up. As you can see, I had to use the universal adapter. It's a 510FYB22. Yep, 510FYB22. 
So this, I left this this tester where it was at last time, but look at these changes I got to do. Video one, CRT type video. bias eighty four. Okay, we're on eighty four volts. I'm trying to do this while not looking at the camera, and I'm probably doing a poor video, but I don't care. That's it for settings on here. So filament volts. I didn't touch this. We'll see if it hits um, six point three when I kick it on. And it did from last time. I'm gonna let this warm up for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna test it. Okay. G1 shorts. Nothing. Here to cathode shorts, nothing. Uh, low, cut off and load tracking. Here we go. Oh boy. I think we got a problem. I mean, maybe that's why this tube took a while. I got it maxed out except the green what the hell now my question is why is the red gun it's like the other one those two are 100% and that one what the heck? Let's go back here. You have to get this in the cutoff for it to work right. We got reactivate mode. Heater's turned up. And uh, this is, I forget, how, how long does it reactivate? 30 seconds with 1 milliamp current. This is this won't hurt the tube any if I do this. All it'll do is wake it up. I got this TV back in 2004. It does have an okay picture. I mean, who knows how many years this one's been in use for, too. After 30 seconds. Yeah, the ready light went out. So I'm going to go to green. Well, the green gun's good. I mean, put it this way. All three guns are good on high emissions. Cutoff low tracking's not doing so well. Um, I actually took it up to high on here just to see what I do. I'm not going any further or doing any more. It ain't going to get any better. And it's not like it's dim. And was, But the thing is, I did have a good grayscale. So this tube's probably a bit weak. But um, we'll, we'll see. I'm going to um, wrap this up and I'm going to perform grayscale shortly. Last time I had this TV on, it was still nice and bright. It just has a shitload of hours on it. But that still goes to prove it. it's still... I can put all those hours on and it still works. I mean, I, I'm saying that because... Holy crap, you realize this TV's 35 going on 36 years old? That's amazing. And it still works on all original parts with probably a boatload of hours on it. I don't know any heat fire, but my boys are going to give you boys a message to take back to him. Get them, boys. We're leaving, oh, we're grieving. Uh -huh.